Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Stories with Shomek. If you're listening for the first time, welcome. If you've listened to the first episode, welcome back. We read, watch and hear stories of human triumph in sports, business, entertainment, life. They're inspiring, always make us feel good. But most times you don't really know the person. They're a celebrity, they're famous. But there are so many fantastic stories among the people you know. Most don't talk about it because they're shy or don't think their stories are worth being told. I respectfully disagree. I am surrounded by a lot of cool and very impressive people who do very, very impressive things. And I insist that these stories are heard by more people. So our guest today is Naman Bajaj. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. It's great to be here. I've never been on this side of the podcast. So <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as a host, you've been killing it. So now we're going to see how good you are as a guest. Okay. So now- I, no pressure <laughs> taken. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure at all. Awesome. So Naman runs Not My Problem. It's a website dedicated to talking about companies and founders that are working to save the planet, that are literally making the world a better place. And I love the way you've described it on your website. So I'm just going to read it out as is. The description is, and I, and I absolutely love it, it's uncovering stories of startups across the world that wouldn't have been founded if the founders had shrugged off these problems as someone else's. And he also helps brands in the sustainability space with their long form content strategies. So think newsletters, articles, and blogs. Welcome, Naman. I'm super pumped about this episode because, you know, sustainability, saving the world, these are all things every human being on the planet has thought about at some point. But right. most, you know, I'm very much part of the majority here have been like, ah, but it's too much to do. I, there's, I, I can't do anything. So tell me, <laughs> tell me, what got you involved and what made you start documenting these stories? Okay. Well, thanks a lot, you know, for having me. You have been a great support throughout this journey. So thanks. Thanks I'm for awesome. that. And yeah, so uh, this goes back to uh, during MBA, post MBA, when uh, when I was at, uh, at Shoe Lake. So I came to Canada in May 2019 and uh, graduated somewhere in mid 2020 i for a fact i mean i, I wasn't sure when i started doing my mba that why, what i wanted to do after that so i i did not have you know uh, a list of things that i wanted to accomplish post mba but i did know what i didn't want to do you know the <laughs> there were there were a couple of things that i was pretty sure of that i i don't want to you know do a certain kind of job or be part of a certain kind of company and nothing against those jobs and companies it's just like it's not for me you know i wouldn't do justice to them or myself by by being there so typical like you know uh most of the people after mba they they choose to go into uh banking consulting uh or work with bigger corporate sectors that's okay again nothing against them but that's that was not for me so i knew like banking consulting amazon walmart jobs are, are not for me i won't do good there so that that didn't leave me with a lot of choices. And then on the other hand, before starting my MBA, I had worked for a couple of startups back home in India, and that that always excited me. You know, working for a for an early stage startup it was taxing, but always excited me. So I thought, let's let's get back into the the startup world. But uh, this time I had a filter. You know, I was like, it shouldn't be just any startup. It should be a startup that is doing something good, something good for the planet or humanity. Or, you know, some in, in the social impact space. So, so those were kind of my loose filters. With, with these filters, I was looking for a job, you know, post MBA in mid 2020. I spoke to a lot of people. Uh, they were right in the middle of the pandemic, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So perfect timing. Perfect timing. It couldn't, couldn't be better. So <laughs> a lot of, uh, I had some great conversations with founders and, you know, people who were working in this space, but uh, but as you mentioned, you know, the pandemic had hit. Most of the startups had stopped hiring. All those conversations eventually died. So then I had to kind of uh, re-strategize what I wanted to do. There were certain privileges that were working in my favor. One was that I had my PR. So I did not, I wasn't in a rush to, you know, get a job to 
maintain my visa or for you know other legal formalities so that was one second was i did not have student debt i used some of my savings and my parents helped me a lot to pay for my you know the tuition fee and having a pr also helped reduce the tuition fee so i did not have the pressure to pay back the student debt so these were the privileges that i had at at that point in time so that helped me you know kind of not rush into things and uh, since i didn't get a full time job i thought okay let's start let's you know let's try to get some contract roles with these yeah. startups if they are not okay with uh, hiring full time people maybe i can help four or five startups on a part time contract role and then you know earn enough to to pay my rent and other basic expenses for a few months so paying toronto rent in itself is a full time job so I, yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you need like a couple of gigs to to pay the rent in the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that time, but yeah, I mean, it was a good idea. Like you know, get some contract part time roles and uh, not being bound by one full time opportunity and and all of that. In in theory, it was great. But then, how do you execute it? Like, why would someone hire? an um, mba a recent mba grad who had moved to the country one year ago and give them like you know a part time contract role in the middle of the pandemic like why would anyone do that especially this is canada so if someone is outside canada there's a thing you know like uh, for for newcomers there's always a bias against them uh, against yeah, hiring yeah. them yeah yeah so so for context to mm-hmm. the listener is yeah. this uh, and i i experienced as well obviously it's it's this want for canadian experience and i i absolutely call bullshit on it because you've got you're inviting people from all over the world to come to the country and then you you don't want to employ them because they don't have canadian experience which is a load of rubbish because these are people from all over the world highly qualified at the end of the day isn't canadian experience the experience of the world we are a super diverse society but for whatever reason it doesn't extend to the first job in the country but yeah anyway that that's that's a yeah. rant for episode because i can go on I, like, like, yeah we could have multiple episodes on just that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean uh, so that uh, so so i started thinking what would you know help me build a network and probably get a few uh contract part time roles to to keep me afloat uh, in this country so so then this idea of uh, starting a podcast series came up this this started in july 2020 and i thought you know why not why not interview uh, some of the canadian founders who are in the social impact or sustainability field uh talk to them uh for like 20 25 minutes it would be free pr marketing for them and a good networking exercise for me you know at least uh, if if they can't give me a, a role right away maybe uh, in the future if they have something they would at least remember me so so that was the selfish motive behind that yeah it's but uh, for both it was yeah 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 so I started uh, started recording it in July 2020 you know started reaching out to founders in this space uh, asked them for just 20 25 minutes of their time and uh, promised them that uh, I would record it edit it publish it promote it and do all of that and all they need to give me is just 20 25 minutes of their time that's it so uh, the the hit rate was pretty good obviously like if i reached out to 10 people you know 8 or 9 accepted that and uh, and it so yeah yeah easily easily yeah it was it was 80% easily and then um, yeah i started mid 2020 did around i think 50 odd episodes of this and that went on till end of 2020 while uh, i mean the idea as i mentioned was to you know network and get some paid gigs that did not really happen in 2020 like for the next 5 6 months after i started it the good part was that i learned about this space from from you know these 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 conversations so my 
first, uh, you know, this this was kind of a primary research for me in the field of sustainability because these founders used to talk about the the problems and then the solutions that they are building. So that was the first time I was uh, introduced to like how big the problem of uh, climate change is like what's what's happening around the world. I had no idea about it, you know, before these conversations. So I think I could not distribute the content that I had created uh, very well. But I think the biggest learner from those 50 conversations was me. That's how I learned about the space. <laughs> yeah. That's so, amazing. so that, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So that, so that was the, you know, starting uh, point. So that, that happened till end of 2020 when I stopped doing it because other things started. Fair. Fair. Yeah. It's yeah. honestly, you know, this is something that they used to tell us at business school and for context, Naman and I went to Shulvik. That's how we know each other. Different years, but that's how we sort of knew off each other. And, uh, you know, that was actually advice given to us by the career people is, you know, to reach out. It's a good way to create content, get your name out there at the same time, you know, learn about the space you're interested in. And none of us really did it. So good on you for actually powering <laughs> on that. And Thanks. honestly, 50 episodes is incredible because when uh, I s- decided I w- I'm going to try running a podcast, I'm a numbers guy and I love looking at stats. And it said that if you make more than three episodes, you're in the top 20% of content creators in the podcast space because most people drop off. Oh, yeah. And you've okay. done 50. So that, <laughs> I don't know yes. what that is, but I'm, I'm guessing it's like the top one or 2% um, when it comes yeah. to... Out content, so that is <laughs> yeah. incredibly, incredibly impressive, and I and I hope you're proud of. It. I am, I am definitely. Thanks a lot. I still remember those days when I did not have any help for uh, editing. You know, I used to record those videos and then go to iMovies and like learned about editing in iMovies, adding subtitles and thumbnails and how how to upload things on YouTube and how to extract audio and put it on you know the different uh, podcast platforms and then how to take out snippets, share it on social yeah. media and all. I think all that is it didn't take off, but that's okay. I I learned a lot, you know, when now I'm kind of restarting the podcast series now, but this time I'm like learning more about different platforms before, you know, hitting the publish button. And I'm outsourcing like some editing work, other other things related to uh, publishing a video. And uh, it helps me, uh, you know, it he- when, you, when you're outsourcing, I think you should have done things yourself to understand what exactly you are outsourcing. Right. So when I look back, yeah, that, that really helped. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was a great experience. Doing things myself phase, uh, yeah. you know, just figuring out how things work. And for, exactly. for listeners, like, if they want to f- listen to your podcast, assuming like, okay, so for context, the way I look at this podcast, if we have four listeners, that's great. Uh, there's more than four. It's a bonus. This is <laughs> more for me to document stories of all the amazing people that I know. Right. So if they want to, if there are people who are listening to this podcast and they want to find yours, what is it called? What platforms can they find? It? Yeah. So the initial one that I ran in 2020, it was called uh, Epic. And there is, I mean, if they want to uh, go through those videos, they are on YouTube. They used to be on a website as well, but I have uh, kind, kind of rebranded everything. And I think we'll come back to it later in the episode, but it's called Epic. You might not, if you just search Epic on YouTube, you might not find it for obvious reasons. But then if you search like Epic with my name, sustainability stories, try a few keywords, then you <laughs> might find them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but so, it's, it's, so lesson number yeah. one, SEO. Yeah. <laughs> we have to. SEO. <laughs> you have to, you have to. It's, and yeah. I also, I also link uh, to the podcast, to your podcast in the show notes, like on the YouTube channels sure. and stuff. So yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. But yeah, that's very cool. So one of the reasons I, I have a lot of respect for Naman and for what he does is very easy to complain. It's easy to say, you know, global warming is fucking us up. There's all this waste. We're not recycling. We're losing, you know, deforestation is at an all time high. All of this is, it's, it's easy to say and it's easy to keep saying it at a party on social media. And the fact is, if you post the negative stuff, on social media, it just spreads faster because of the way the algorithms are structured. 
And also not just the algorithm. That's the stuff that people engage with. It's easy, you know, we're doom scrolling, what's another post? And for whatever reason, as a society, we take pessimists more seriously than an optimist. It's easy to give in, to say, I can't do anything. And a lot of feel, a lot of people do feel strongly about making the planet better, but very few, number one, know what to do to make it better. And because there's, we don't know what to do and what are the small steps that people can take? It's more like, you know, whatever it's, it is what it is. And we need all kinds of support and work to make the earth better for us and for future generations. And by following Naman, I've learned so much about sustainability and the companies that are actually doing the work to make things right. And that is why, like, you know, you said it didn't quite take off. But just so you know, if not for you and not my problem, I'd absolutely say, yeah, it's not my problem the earth is dying and move on. I'm generally a glass half full and, you know, I'm fairly optimistic, but reading your content, like your newsletter every Friday and uh, your uh, LinkedIn posts, like I am actually more confident on humanity now than I was before because we'll find a way, one way or another. The people, there are people who are committed, smart and focused on doing it. So just so you know, like, while you said it didn't quite take off, it it has had an impact and it continues to make an impact. You probably just didn't realize it. That means a lot, man. Thanks. Thanks for, for you know, saying that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was, I, I never actually, I think, started it with, with that intention. I think the intention was, it was a very selfish one in the beginning, at least when I was doing the podcast, you know, learning about the space, getting a gig and, and all of that. But yeah, I think it has uh, kind of, at least, you know, it has impacted 100, 150 people. And I am really, yeah. really proud of that. If if those 100, 150 people are talking about it in their circles, that's like enough of an impact. And I talk about uh, it all the time. awesome. <laughs> Genuinely yeah. a big fan because I, you know, I I like seeing stories of optimism. I like, because they're happening. It's not that it isn't happening, but it's just yeah. the doom and gloom that takes over our feed. And exactly. you know, every single good story that says, hey, yes, it's a problem, but there are people working on it. That makes me feel very good. So I, okay, I have a question. Like the current maybe unfair generalization is working in sustainability equates to working in the not profit space. So, you know, hmm. not, hmm. not a very viable career path. There's not enough money in it. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think it, it is still a general notion that, uh, you can either earn well or do good. We you, yeah. you can't like, you know, <laughs> do good and earn well at the same time. It's changing. It's changing for sure. I mean, there are a lot of communities, a lot of startups that are actually just working and getting more people involved in in the climate tech space and whatever like uh, whatever newsletter whatever stories i have published on in the newsletter i think less than 1% of them are not for profit companies who are working in this space and i think i have published more than 250 stories uh, for sure and i would have gone through like thousands of stories to publish these 250 stories and all of them are like you know in very well in the capitalist system that they're there to make profit but they're doing good by while while making profits and i don't blame them for making profits like the whole system you have to be part of the system to kind of you know bring a change you can't do it from outside and say like this is my company and this is a system system and company are separate and i would change the system through my company which is not even part of the system so i have full respect for people who are you know taking a for profit route to uh, change the system it's changing the the general notion i think yeah it, it would still take time but i would encourage people to and we can put it in the notes of the podcast as well to go through some of the job boards that are dedicated to the climate tech space you know uh, and and there are jobs across the country it's not like only across the world it's not like you know just in north america there are 
क्लाइमेट टेक जॉब्स और यूरोप इज अड ऑफ नॉर्थ अमेरिका सो देर आर मोर जॉब्स इन यूरोप एंड दिस नथिंग इन इंडिया इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट इंडिया इज इन फैक्ट लाइक वे अहेड ऑफ वट वी कैन वी थिंक ऑफ और वी कैन इमेजिन यू नो देर आर लाइक लॉर्ड ऑफ क्लाइमेट टेक स्टार्ट अप कमिंग अप देर एज वेल आई थिंक इट्स जस्ट अबाउट once you go through these job boards or you become part of the slack channels or read up a bit on it you know realize that how fast is this space changing and with the recent layoffs i think a lot of people are taking a step back and rethinking what they want to do with those 40 50 hours they spend on something in a week so and I, yeah and having said that i think you know job is or what you work on is is one of the biggest impact that you can create in this space as an individual because you know you're not doing it alone you're part of a, a company and you're contributing and you're working to improve the planet or humanity for 8 or 9 hours a day so so that's that's the biggest impact that you can have i love that i love that and are there any particular job boards that come top of mind for you that you would recommend yeah i mean there is i think this terra.do so t e r r a dot d o that's that's doing a great job there is climate base dot org i think that's that's a good one there is a big slack community which is called work on climate and i think they have a website as as well so they have a very active like job posting board and there are a couple of this climate base weekly i think they they have a weekly newsletter as well so there's a lot that is happening in in this space you just have to like just if you become the part of the this this ecosystem you would keep discovering things which right. is which is the best part yeah right that's awesome yeah i love it right i'm fully aligned with you you know the own, the way for companies in this space for it to be sustainable in the sense of its yeah. own lifetime and to keep right. going is they need to turn a profit they need to be able to reinvest that money back in and it needs yeah. to be part of the system as you said because you know thoughts on capitalism is again a different story <laughs> yeah uh, i know yeah episode, but you're right like you know you can't change that structure but you need to find ways to grow within the system and i I, i'm going to be honest like i it is it is a space that i've looked at as an outsider and been oh that's cool that and the more i followed your stories i'm like oh god there's some really cool stuff going on like mm-hmm. i remember reading about there was one post you had on a company that's replacing packaging it was i, I forget what it was based on it was basically one of the plant extracts that generally goes to waste um, Yeah uh there are a couple of them one is i think in in Cambodia which is using cassava which is a root extract yes. to make those yeah so so it's replacing uh, it's replacing plastic by that yeah yeah, yeah. I, i remember reading that and i was like okay you know what these are straight up you know good solutions and in terms of pricing it is comparable to plastic and those are the things that make a difference right because sure you can have and i'm just going to use shampoo as an example i don't know why that's the first one i thought of but there's <laughs> like the png shampoo and then there's right. another shampoo right next to it uh, probably not cuz png is a lot of money for that shelf space <laughs> uh, but as an example it's another yeah. shampoo which is you know better ingredients uh, sustainably sourced better packaging but the problem is it's twice the price mm. and that is where it becomes a challenge because there are people who yeah. want to use better products that are better for them right. better for the planet but yeah. it's out of their budget and mm. that is where you know being part of the system comes into play because the more mm. they're able to uh, generate sales on a premium price they're going to be able to introduce better pricing and Great. Uh, finally, be in range of competition, and that has been my point every time I've had a conversation in at a dinner party or wherever uh, around how do we save the planet? Which, as mm. as lofty as it sounds, you know, if we don't do it, who will? And yeah. uh, it's always boiled down to it needs to be on a price point that's affordable 
to the regular customer. If it's a comparable solution and it's not at a premium, I absolutely will go ahead and buy the thing yeah. that's better for me and yeah. the planet. But if it's out of my budget, like then I need to feel really strongly about that particular line of products mm-hmm. where it makes sense. So right. I, all this to say, like in terms of pricing that you obviously know this space better, is are you seeing pr- prices get more competitive across the board? Yeah, I mean, great point. So I think the macro word for all of this pricing and other things is is convenience, basically. So you cannot yeah. offer, you know, uh, something which is more sustainable, better for the planet, but take the convenience out of the product. So if if a better brand is not available in the stores from where I'm shopping, I would not purchase it. If I have to go to, you know, an individual website to purchase your product and then pay something extra on shipping and then wait for 10 days to get the product. Some people do that. It's not easy, but when you're used to like next day shipping and few... The adopters, right? The one they are the early adopters. Yeah. yeah. But how do we... Get they are the early adopters. Right, right. I, I think a lot of these smaller players that are coming in the field of, uh, in the, in the, or building products that are better for the planet, they, they realize like how, how uh, important it is to make their product being available more conveniently or, you know, it's in the same shelf space as the other products that are coming from bigger companies or better known brands. So I think that's changing. That's changing. I mean, it's also changing in the store. So like in Canada, if you, I don't know, have been to Sobeys in the recent past, like they have this now uh, a natural foods section where they keep food and other products from more ethical and conscious brand. So I think it's changing. It's not changing at the pace that it should be. Price is obviously, I, I get it. I totally get it that, you know, if something is, uh, you have to pay 2x for something which is better for the planet. As an individual, you would not do it. Another aspect that has that I have seen coming into play is an individual would be ready to, you know, pay a premium on a product if it's about their health. So in case, like if I tell you, Shamik, go and buy this shampoo instead of your usual shampoo because it's better for the planet. It would create less waste, less pollution. It won't end up in the oceans or landfill. You would be like, again, not my problem, you know. If if everyone else is not doing it, why should why should I? Like, how would just one bottle make a difference? But then if I tell you, Ishamik, this is a shampoo that that you have been using till now and there are certain ingredients in it that are carcinogenic or it might impact your reproductive system. But there is another alternate that is available in the market, which is 1.5x the price of your usual brand. But it does, it contains like clean ingredients. It has been certified by certain regulatory bodies and they say, and they have, you know, tested all the ingredients and they are clean. They won't impact your health and, and all of that. Then I think, okay, yeah, I can pay more for, you know, a product that is better for my health. So, so I've seen like brands positioning themselves on, on those lines that it's better for you and the planet. So, Okay, even if you don't care about the planet, that's okay, but you care about your health, right? So you would buy something that's, that's better for you. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard, honestly, for smaller brands to reach a place where they can compete on the pricing with, you know, a brand that has been there for 100, 100 plus years. But yeah, I think these, these small changes could, could bring in uh, the change. For sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Like it's, it's definitely a chicken and egg situation. Small mm. brands don't have scale to offer competitive pricing but they need people to buy at this price to get to scale where they can start being competitive in terms of pricing yeah Yeah. and it's it's frustrating i mean sometimes like uh so you know uh my partner and i we try to buy from good conscious sustainable brands but with the cost of living going up so high especially here sometimes you're like frustrated like why should we, you know, we're not perfect. So why should we like, what would, what difference would it make? So 
doesn't matter that you know i am in this field and it, so it doesn't mean that i don't ask my that question to myself like what would one box make a difference or one bottle make a difference you know i do every day and sometimes i just go with the usual cheap brands i mean i can't afford it so yeah. it's it's not it's it's problem that all of us are are going through so you are not alone in this journey but do whatever you can at least yeah or at least talk to people in in your network about you know these brands yeah yeah i mean at the end of the day we don't have to be perfect you know, you know it's the yeah. things that snowball into big things like something as simple as you know carrying your own bag when you go shopping yeah. instead of yeah opting for a paper bag <laughs> or a plastic pl- plastic is an absolute no no try and avoid it as much as possible yeah. but having said there are days when i and i'm pr- i'm pretty diligent with it most days but on some days hmm. i'm you know on my way back from office i need to pick right. up some groceries i don't have my bag I'm yeah. like, you know what it's fine i'm, it's okay. I'm just going to take fine. one plastic bag and and you know the exactly. Indian way we, we don't throw our plastic bag we keep we don't throw plastic it's a good way yeah yeah so, <laughs> yeah yeah sure. yeah we are taking that plastic bag but it's not making its way back it's to the landfills because we are exactly we, yeah yeah i i still have bags from 2019 Well, wow. <laughs> just sitting. Oh, that's there. amazing. I I don't know why they're there. It's it's just yeah. just a behavior that got incorporated growing up in India. Right, and right. Yeah, yeah. There are, and that that is probably something that there's probably cross cultural lessons that are out there that can be incorporated right. in different societies. Because yes, it's called single use plastic, but I can assure you, most Indians don't look at it as a single use plastic. It's a bag. it's there and then when you have guests coming over and you want to give them something away you put it in that bag and give it to them and exactly if the chances are they are also going to keep that bag and then use it to pass it forward so i know right yeah opportunities there and yeah. there are actually yeah i think yeah, yeah. i think every 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 indian household has that you know the the drawer in the house or somewhere yeah, in the closet that. where all Yeah, it's just for the bags, or there is like a bag of bags, exactly. Yeah, so so it's 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 there. I think uh, some of the values that come from India, or India doesn't have, you know, that uh, the the use and throw culture. I think it's it's on the rise, but it's still controllable. It's not as bad as it's in yeah. in this part of the world. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think that that is something that I've noticed across the developed world is there's more of a single use attitude versus yeah. in the I don't want to use the term developing world but because I I I hate it yeah. but you know because every country has its own way of operating and I don't think right. it's fair to develop versus developing um yeah. but just like, the purpose of like, just con- mm. you know, connect those two. So I have a question yeah. like you know hopefully sure. this episode has gotten some people years up in terms of sustainability and what are some ways that you think people can dip their toe especially <clears throat> in north america where it's more of a use and throw recycle if you can if you can't recycle whatever in that kind of a mind space and attitude what are some of the low lift easy ways that people can start doing things that reduce their carbon footprint so to speak hmm. yeah i think a uh, great question so i would probably start with you know something that you mentioned it's not about being perfect so a lot of us are like either we either i am like sustainable ethical conscious or i'm not there is no middle ground i i think yeah. that's where you should start with and probably go easy on yourself and i've learned it hard you know over the last few years i think at one point i had become a, a purist and i started questioning uh, a lot of things it does impact you and the people around you and you know your your relationships or your your social circles your immediate ones so so that's not good i mean you won't reach anywhere with that so i've learned it the hard way and i would you know ask people to to go easy on on themselves because at the end of the day again you are part of the system you cannot change it so whatever you can do by being within the system do that some of the i think the highest or if you want to 
I would say the two most important ones that I feel that people can do, and it's not about, so your question was more about, you know, getting started, but I would like probably start with the most impactful ones if, if you want to do something. So the most impactful ones are first switching to a job where you can do where, where the work is helping the planet or humanity. That is the most impactful work, but Again, you can't do it like right away. And the second one is looking the way how you bank. So a lot of the, you know, the fossil fuel projects or projects that are impacting the planet in a negative way are being funded by banks. So it's, it's your money that is eventually funding bad projects. So if you can think of ways or there are actually like cleaner banks out there or cleaner savings accounts out there in in each country. So so those those are the two like very big impactful ones. But if you're just getting started on the journey, small steps, man. What can you do in your country? Can can you take those uh, like like you mentioned, you know, reusable bags? That's that's a good one to to start with. Public transport, if it's not like taking. 5x more time than taking a cab. I think it doesn't work well in in North America. Depends on where you are staying. Like if you are in the core of the city, then public transport might be good. But sometimes it's like, you know, a bus would take me an hour to reach somewhere where a cab would take me 10 minutes. And obviously like time is, is the key there. So if you can, then yeah, why not? Have conversations. I think that's that's important. And uh, I think that was... Uh, like, like you mentioned, you know, those stories that, that I've been writing give you hope. A lot of people have kind of reached out to me and told me that a great way to have conversations for them in their circle is start with positive stories, you know, not really talk about the problem, but say, hey, have you heard of this cool startup in this part of the world that is doing something great? And you start on a positive note and then, you know, you can move to the, to the problem. So at least uh, have those conversations. Uh, food waste is the low hanging fruit when, when it comes to, you know, how you can impact. So the thing with food waste is when, when you are not uh, consuming something on your plate and throwing it away. So one is all the resources that have been used to grow, transport, sell the food, bring it to your place, cook it, put it on your plate, have been wasted. And if it's not being composted well after it is disposed of, then it would end up in a in a landfill and would really release methane, which is like 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So you're like wasting a lot of resources when you are like wasting food. That's a very low hanging fruit. Yeah, yeah, because I, 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 I agree with you on the food waste and I absolutely hate wasting food, but I've always looked at it as, oh, I bought these onions and now I'm not using them. Uh, but you're, so, I, I like the fact that you added, and this is now going to be something that plays in my mind is it's not just that the onion, it's, it was grown, transported, uh, made it to the store and then, right. you know, gas, everything. And that everything, definitely yeah. adds a lot more. Yeah, intensity to right. you know letting even one scrap go. So I so that I, I think for me this has definitely been a big takeaway <laughs> from yeah. just be more mindful on that. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Food waste is definitely a big one, and it's better for your wallet. Yeah, like, if you're not yeah, it is. Yeah, actually. So I think a lot of again. So it when it becomes personal, yeah, you would make all the effort to to bring a change so yeah it's it's you know it's good for good for your wallet good for the planet like it's like saving the planet on an auto mode <laughs> exactly <laughs> the, the yeah. more we can and you're you're so right like the more we can automate these kinds of things the better yeah. it is for everybody and, right uh, and i love that you said that you know you need to introduce people to these uh, to these concepts and to these companies in a positive light because yeah. You, know, you can't shame someone into changing their behavior. It doesn't, no, it doesn't work. No. It's, it's it just doesn't. going to have that double down and be like, okay, now watch me. Cause I'm very much like that. If someone tells me, by the way, this mm. thing that you sucks, I'll be like, now watch me do it even more. Just yeah. Because you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Or versus, hey, you know, yeah, yeah. you can't do this X activity with right. this. 
and it's yeah. whatever it's better all the good stuff then i'm listening so i love right. it i think there is a way and you know i i i will say like i've been following you for a while and i've seen that change in the tone of your social yeah. posts because i remember there was a time when it used to be if you consume a uh, one i don't know, i remember it was like one pound of beef equals x right. liters of water so and so gas yeah you really don't eat it and yeah you know, it's like uh, i feel bad about this but i'm still going to eat it <laughs> Uh, right. So it didn't do anything to move it, but you know, yeah. versus saying, "Hey, look, this is cassava extract, hmm. and this replaced packaging, which leads to ten percent reduction in hmm. greenhouse gas." Then I'm I'm dialed in because I'm like, "Oh wow, okay, hmm. Uh, hmm. I can I can invest in this packaging, which does the job." Right, and hmm. you know, I saw that change happen uh, across your hmm. social posts. So I, I'm guessing that's yeah. part of of the journey and you know you you've discovered that but so right. on on that I'm curious like yeah. did you see a change in interactions on your social feed between this uh, between the negative tone versus talking about the positive hey we're winning this fight there have been yeah i mean it's a good point and thank you for that feedback i think i've never that switch has happened but i you know never went back to those posts and saw them from this angle i do go back to my old posts sometimes there's a lot of yeah. cringe involved with that like what was i thinking and why did i write that but oh, okay, uh, listen, i think if no one should be afraid to be cringe because that's how yeah, we yeah. put us there and we learn and we grow exactly yeah and, and i've realized like if you cringe at your old content that means you're growing so, so that's a it's a positive yeah, sign yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, now I think uh, earlier I used to talk at least on the social media more about the problems, and then yeah, I think the kind of comments or DMs or DMs that I got was yeah, this problem is happening. We have seen that as well. This is even bigger in our country. I don't know why no one is doing anything about it. I agree with you. We need to do something about it, and then that's it. it ended there but now with the solutions part like it's very interesting like most of the comments and dms that i get is hey this is a great solution do you know about something similar in my country that is the most common comment that or dm that i get you know oh nice nice packaging solution do you know of someone in this country that is building something similar i'm like wow this is exactly you know what would kind of motivate people to look beyond the yeah. usual yeah so if there's any potential budding entrepreneur listening you might want to go through naman's content and you might find an alternative that doesn't exist in your country and that's an opportunity yeah. to launch your company in the clean tech space that's very cool yeah so there's yeah, actually there's a potential landmine of opportunities in this space for people that want to get started and it's in your, i i don't mean for this to sound like a plug for your content but the but i yeah. just like all the stuff you've put out and there's so many ideas and opportunities there which one there are people already working on it and two if it if it doesn't exist in your country uh you can do it and even if it does exist in your country competition is good it, yeah so yeah i, I mean know, it's the pie yeah. is very small right so more people it, coming the in, pie is small the size of the market exactly exactly this is like this huge scope to increase the pie in in this space and yeah i mean if if you if you come across a great idea if you want to replicate it in your country even if it exists like you mentioned do it like you would find people you know who would be ready to invest buy or just you know be a, a cheerleader for for your brand so yeah i think there is still like a lot of scope in this field in each country that that you can start and yeah i mean i get a lot of ideas from by posting these stories if i post something there are a lot of people who ask me that if there is something similar in our country but on the other side there are a lot of people who suggest me also oh we have something similar in our country as well like you might want to have a look at it and that it just you know goes into one of my notion boards where i'm br- building this brand database okay i have to write about uh, this side of as well so yeah it's it's a, it's a great ecosystem to be in i love it i love it and uh, yeah i mean if there are people that are getting into this space and have launched companies and need help with their content yeah 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that is no, honestly this has been super super interesting and this this is one of those conversations that I correlate to my visit to the Air and Space Museum in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm a big aviation enthusiast. Like I love yeah. this kind of stuff. The in the museum it basically had the first ever a model of the first ever aircraft flown in 19 mm-hmm. And mm. all the progress we've made up to now. Great. Ins- and when you look at it, it's, it's only 120 years. It's not been that long. And it's not been that long. The progress that we've made because of, you know, just human innovation, uh, people constantly pushing the bar. And I came out feeling like, you know, yes, in the day to day, things seem like they aren't getting better, but they are. We just, we're just not realizing it. And until you zoom out and see how much yeah. things have progress, there's so right. much happening. And that's how I feel every time I read your posts. I'm like, okay, you know what? Yes, <laughs> Twitter is full of <laughs> all the bad things going on and Elon Musk, but there's so many good things happening. And that's not getting, that's not necessarily going viral because it's not as, yeah. it's not one, it's not doom and gloom. Right. Two, yeah it's not getting picked up as much as because, you know, the end of the day, mainstream media is incentivized mm. to talk about that stuff. Uh, right. So that's not, get, that's not making its way out there. But thanks to the internet, yeah, these the good news still has a fighting chance. And it has. Yeah, are, yeah. The truth is there are a lot of good things going on and people like yeah. you are definitely doing the work in bringing those stories to light because, you know, one is, of course, there's people who do the work, but you need people to go ahead and tell those stories so that other people come to know about it. And right. You need to know that the work that you do is very, very important. <laughs> Thank you. It's gotten, it gets me feeling better about the mm-hmm. world. Everything seems to be going to shit. Yeah. It's not as bad out there. There are people doing the work that it takes to make the world better. Yeah. I mean, so if, so how do people connect with you, Naman? Because I feel like, if there are more than four listeners, they will want to follow you and get your stories, access that database of content. Yeah, I've been writing this newsletter, not my problem for the last two plus years now. Uh, there are like 100 plus editions. The website is not my problem dot earth. You can go and subscribe there. And, you know, every Friday, every Friday you would get a couple of stories and positive climate news in your inbox. So, so that's one trying to be active on LinkedIn and trying to be more consistent. I think I've, I've been writing there for the, since I think 2020 when I started the the podcast series, but uh, it's been, I haven't been consistent. So in the past few months of trying to be more consistent there, my DMs are open on LinkedIn. My email ID is at multiple places on <laughs> LinkedIn and social media and on my website. So Always up for a chat if you're building a solution or planning to build something in this field. I just want to talk about, you know, what's what's happening around the world in this space. Positive or negative, any type of conversation is is okay. Like we could just sit and rant for hours as well because <laughs> there's still you know, a lot of work that, that needs to be to be done. So yeah, I mean those are a couple of ways to chat about this space. Yeah. Amazing. Before we wrap up, this is something I want to do going forward is sure. if you could go back in time and tell 20 year old Naman, it probably shows that we're getting old, but like, <laughs> but yeah. what would you, what would be your piece of advice to him? I think uh, it's kind of not related to sustainability. I, I suppose, but just like not you would n- yourself. Yeah. Experiment more, I would say, be less scared. I think I could have, it did move, you know, a lot of times out of my comfort zone, but I could have done it better. Do that. Form, I I would say form relationships because I think you don't realize that you, you move away from some of your closest friends because of different reasons. But at the same time, you have the opportunity to bring in more people in your network. In the last few years, like whatever, you know, I have achieved or whatever paid gigs I have got or whatever work I have got, it's it's all been through my network. Like 
the job that I was doing for the last two years. My boss never asked for my CV. Like I had a CV less interview. He, he didn't know what I did before it. It was just through, you know, someone asked me to get in touch with him. We started speaking, found each other, you know, interesting because we were in the same space. And he said, you know, let's work together. Never asked for my resume. So like build a, build a good network. It need not be widespread, but, uh, should be deep. That's that. something that I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think on a personal front, I think it's it's important to keep your personal ones closer and involved in what you are doing. You know, so it's 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 really important, and that that should be a priority because, like, in your bad days, I think only they care. No one else does. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's something I've I've learned the hard way as well. So yeah, those are the few things probably I would tell my older, my younger self. Yeah, amazing. I love that. And hopefully, in ten years down the road, when you play back this podcast, you have you listen to it and be like, yeah, damn. <laughs> you advice for your older self back when yeah. you, <laughs> you can just pause it and be like, dude, listen, do X Y Z. <laughs> right yeah this is a good good place to come back to after 10 years awesome yeah well Naman thanks so very much uh, for agreeing to be a part of this um, I'm a big fan and hopefully uh, if we have more than four listeners they'll like, <laughs> like okay whoever listens to the episode will absolutely agree with me on the fact that you're you're awesome and you're doing very very cool thank things thank you I hope this episode explodes for whatever reason mm. and leads to more and more people subscribing to uh, notmyproblem.earth um, fantastic website with a lot of resources a um, lot of good content that if even if you're feeling hopeless just I encourage you to go read those newsletters because you'll come out saying okay things are not that bad people are, <laughs> there are good people out there <laughs> fighting yeah doing the work that is needed to make the world better thanks man i mean it's it's been a pleasure thank you for you have been a great support all throughout it means a lot i mean it's i i don't think uh, you know last time uh, i don't think i had a conversation in at least in the recent past where i was given the opportunity to talk so much about climate change <laughs> people <laughs> Are you know <laughs> there are there are fewer people out there who want who are like interested than you know being interesting. I think a lot of us try to be interesting than be interested. So and uh, yeah, so it's it's hard you know to break into like uh, any conversation and talk about climate change. So I'm I'm really glad that I got this platform to at least talk openly about it but great questions out there and uh, for anyone who is listening i'm sure we would get more than four uh, listeners for for this one and uh, expectations really low then everything's a bonus (laughs) yeah that (laughs) feels nice but yeah i mean it's it's a it's a great great platform that that you're building and i think we mostly talk to people who have you know achieved something in life and they have made it big and all but these are like, uh, there are a lot of hidden small stories here and there. And I really appreciate you bringing them out. I wouldn't call them small, but yeah, they're definitely. You wouldn't call them small. Okay. <laughs> big, okay. stories, big stories, just hidden. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thanks so much, Naman. Uh, it's awesome. been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, really- anyway, I'll be, I'll be on Twitter and LinkedIn commenting and retweeting everything you put out because I think. Thank you. It's all very good content and more and more Means people a lot. need to see it. Awesome. Means Take a lot, care, man. man. You too. Thanks.